In the repair shop today, Susie's working on a family heirloom that showcases some extraordinary artistry. If I could do half as good a job as this, I'd be very happy. It's that good. While a pretty kitty with a romantic story behind it, lands Kirsten a challenge. I have to say, um, yeah, it's not something that I'm used to dealing with. Yeah. Um, so it is, you know, it's going to be interesting. But first into the repair shop today, Mervyn Bell with the cherished memory of his childhood. Hello. Hi there. I'm Jay. I'm Mervyn. Oh, nice to meet you. John? Metal worker Dominic Chenier is just the man to knock this rundown roadster back into shape. Wow. What is it? What's the history behind it's it? It's a go-kart, obviously three-wheeled. When did you get this? About 1959. This was just all red, gleaming, under the Christmas tree. I uh, couldn't wait to get on it, you know. Uh, I think there was a few chunks taken out the doors as I went through them, but it took a while to master, you know. And yeah. then, uh, when I got outside of it, you know, you saw lower down and yeah. speeding along. And, <laughs> and the wind was yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not much left now, but... Yeah. Right. It, it, I can see it in your eyes. As soon as we start talking about your childhood with this, yes. you just light up. Oh, yes. And it's been special ever since you've got it. It's been ridden by everybody in the family, right. uh, nephews and nieces. My own children. Yeah. Everybody just had fun on it. It's getting to the point now where I like to see if I can get something done so my grandchildren can oh, go on it. Because it is getting a bit, I wouldn't say dangerous. Dangerous, I think. You know, <laughs> safe to say. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's such an unusual looking thing. I've never seen anything like this. On the rear tyre, it does mention Lyons Brothers, who were the forerunners of Triang. Okay. So oh, I don't I know whether it was an early Triang toy. I don't it's know. A I just of a sticker here. Yes. There? Yes. Triang was a 20th century toy manufacturer owned by three toy magnates, the Lines Brothers. I don't see a steering wheel on this, so how does, how does it work? Put your feet on the... and steer with your feet. That's dangerous, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> it, it, is, it is, it is. <laughs> so I get you sit on the seat, your feet steer, but uh, what's this, a brake? No, no, there's... well, it is a brake, but it's also the mechanism to make it go. OK. Uh, and that's, so that's and also the brake. So you can kind of, yeah... Go like that, and that... Yeah, if you lift it up... Oh, so... It, crack, so that it moves the back yes, wheel. cranks around and moves the back wheel. So you can get back up the hill again? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to stop, you just reverse. And then it stops. Oh, That's very clever, yeah. isn't it? That is quite it's simple. Smart. Yeah. What would you like us to do to it? The main is the, yeah, the, is the seat and the seating area. OK. Um, and the wheels. These are not the original wheels, are they? No, they're not the original wheels. The, the original front wheels were similar to this. OK. Um, so how come they replaced it? It just got so worn oh. and the spindles broke. My father, he found some... I think the pram wheels. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it used to be red. If it could come back to being red again, yeah. that would be ideal. And whether you can roll we'll the seat yeah, up we'll do and things yeah. like that. But importantly, it's just it, it's yes. going to work again. Yes, and make it safe. Make it safe, make it to, safe. to use yes. again. Yes. Great. So, Don, what do you reckon? I think it's brilliant. Yeah? I love it. I'm yeah. jealous, yeah. Me too. Yeah. I want to have a go, man. I know. There's a fair <laughs> bit to do. There is a fair bit to do. It has a, obviously had a, a lot of use. Yeah. It has a lot of use. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everybody's loved it. <laughs> Thank you for bringing this along. All Thank right. you. Lovely Thank to you. meet you. Thanks, now. Bye. OK. The state it's in now is a bit sad because I've had so much enjoyment and a lot of other people have had a lot of enjoyment out of it and it's got tatty. It wants a little bit of TLC. You know what? This will give you oodles of fun, though, wouldn't it? I, yeah, eh? I would have loved to have this <laughs> when I was a kid. Absolutely loved it. So, a lot of the stuff is quite... It's, yeah, it's not too bad. It's not too bad at all. It just it needs to come apart completely. There's yeah. a lot of bits that are just worn. I think it's just been well used and loved. And, you know, it's <laughs> yeah. just... It's done its job. It has done its job. So it's just a case of, yeah. obviously, finding new wheels. Yep. Cool. And then we'll try and have a look at this seat, which is going to be a, a bit of a tricky job, to be honest with you. As you said, it's done its job. Nice short turn. Thanks, Jay. Thank you. I need to break down all of the components into its, each individual piece and then assess them for damage and wear. And there's also little interesting things. I think as I take it apart, the more I'm sort of having a look, there's chips in the paint. I think we'll uncover some of the history of this red paint. There's hints of, like, old stickers. So I'm quite looking forward to 
getting it apart and seeing what's underneath all of this dirt and muck. Next into the repair shop is Kim Davy from Portsmouth. He's brought a piece of his family history. Good morning. For leather expert Susie Fletcher. What have you got for me today, then? I've got a leather gun slip. OK. Which is in desperate need of your attention. OK. Wow, look at this. I had it made for my father back in 87, when he was um, 60 years old. So, Edward Davy. That's my dad. And LX. 60, Roman numerals. Fantastic. My dad was a superb father. He didn't have a lot of money. Everything that he had was ploughed into his family. He was the youngest of 13. My word. Uh, he was evacuated during the war mm -hmm. up onto the Strathfield Say estate. And he used to go out with the gamekeeper. And that's where Dad got his love for shooting. He then had five children of his own. And once I was old enough to be able to have my own shotgun, mm -hmm. then we used to go out shooting together, shooting clays. Um, his 60th birthday was coming up, and I just thought I'll get him something special. I got talking to a guy that I was working with, and uh, he said, oh, uh, I'm a amateur leathersmith. He said, no, I, I make cartridge bags and gun slips. I said, well, that's fantastic. Could you just make me a gun slip for my Dad's 60th birthday? And he said, yeah, sure, sure, I'll do it for you. When Dad's birthday came, I said to him, I've got you something special, you know. <sighs> it's emotional. Yeah, yeah, it's OK. When he unwrapped it, he just looked at me and he cried. First time I'd ever seen him cry, and the last time I'd ever seen him cry. Oh, my word. This was the first time that he had something that was really nice. Really? Yeah. And for he, his 60th birthday? For his 60th birthday, yeah. And I had a cartridge bag made. Oh, my word. He had the gun slip and the cartridge bag. And he walked into the clay shoe, and everybody said, wow, where did you get that made? And his greatest line was to say, my boy had it made for me. He was so proud. And, uh, you know, it still gets at me now. Yeah. Yeah. It was a magical moment. Magical. Oh, your heart. <laughs> thank you. Lovely. The work is stunning. Yeah, thank you. For him to be an amateur and yet produce such beautiful work. Yeah, and his name was Ken and he was a maintenance man and he was a smashing fella and he really did me proud with that. But um, it, it starts to, to, you can see, it started to fade. There was white flashes on the wings of the big bird. Oh, I see. So you, you would like it to be, like, freshened up? Yes, The please. colours just, to freshen yeah, up? Just okay. to freshen it. The stitching is gone. Yep. It's a little bit crumpled on this end. Yep. It's been in my cupboard for, for 28 years, and I was so sad that, under my watch, it had deteriorated, and I thought, I've got to do something about this. How come you've kept it in the cupboard for so long? Well, when Dad died, I got it out a couple of times to go shooting with it, mm. but it just upset me too much, and I just, I just couldn't do it. I trust you implicitly. Do whatever you need to do to make it sparkle. I am going to put all of my love into this and get it back into the condition it needs to be. Susie, thank you very much And it's indeed. been a pleasure to meet you. And meet you too. It means absolute oodles, because it was his last nice thing that he ever had, and it just, it just means a great deal. The craftsmanship in this is outstanding. I've been doing leather work for 40 odd years, and in my early days, I was trained how to do this. And to be honest, if, if I could do half as good a job as this, I'd be very happy. It's that good. The first thing I think would be to just reattach the leather shape here that's holding on the strap. It's, it's beginning to get detached. Over the years of it being stood up on its tip, everything's got squished down. 
it's, it's got flattened and it just wants to fall down all the time, so that needs to be blocked out a bit. And Kim has requested that I, I liven all this paintwork up. Um, I'm not sure how vivid it's going to come once I clean it. Hopefully that's going to brighten it up enough, but if necessary, I'm going to have to go over what Ken had done when he originally made this. Out in the metal workshop, Dom's been busy with a 1950s toy cart. So I've got the go-kart completely apart now. It's actually come apart quite well, which I'm really relieved about. There's an awful lot of red paint creeping through underneath this black overpaint. Quite curious if I can take off this layer of black paint to see if there's enough red paint on there that maybe we could try and save it. It's really exciting doing this. I mean, you can already see how that that vivid red is just coming through already, and I've not even really just started. I can just only imagine how excited Mervyn must have been on that Christmas morning when he saw this gleaming red go-kart under his tree. Trying toys like this were the envy of children in the 1950s. In their heyday, Trying were the biggest toy factory in the world, producing train sets, go-karts, and model cars until the 1970s. I'm really pleased I'm gonna be able to preserve the original paint on Mervyn's go-kart. A sympathetic restoration means filling in the worst areas of paint loss with a precisely matched color. It's a quite slow process, just touching in all of the chips and damage, but being quite selective about how far to go. These are all kind of battle scars from Mervyn's trips down the hills when he was a kid. And I think it'd be such a shame to paint over all of that history. Essential to any go-kart, the wheels. And sharing the outdoor workshop with bike guru Tim has its advantages. Tim, have you got a second? Yeah, certainly. Just what do you think about this? This is uh, Mervyn's go-kart. He wants to hand it on to his grandkids and they want to use it. All right. My concern is this wheel. I don't know what to do. Obviously, it needs to be safe. Uh, yeah, from a safety point of view and structurally, I would replace all the spokes. You think we have to replace them all? Yes, absolutely. All right, no worries. Brilliant. Thanks, Tim. Cheers. Wheels work by sending force out from the hub to the rim via the spokes. After years of compression and stretch, the spokes lose tension and wheels get wobbly, which is where Tim comes in. What spokes do, they basically allow you to straighten the wheel up. I can true the wheel uh, up and down and also side to side like that and get it central. Truing like this means the wheel holds its shape perfectly as it spins. You can't beat a good hand-built wheel. A new solid rubber tyre is fashioned and fitted. OK, I'm happy with that. One wheel. Meanwhile, Dom is dealing with the damaged seat. So it's basically just isolating the broken area. I'll cut this out, uh, and this should just leave me with a nice, clean square. Now the old damaged area has been removed, I just need to shape a new piece weld it in and grind it back. And you'll never know that we've been in there. So this is a really critical part of the repair. It's so important that it's strong. All the welding work's now complete on the seat. Uh, it's now structurally sound, which is great. I'm just cleaning it up to paint, um, and I'm amazed, absolutely amazed. Almost two thirds of the seat is actually this beautiful original color green. I've got a fantastic color match to that green, so I'm gonna be able to introduce that color onto the top very carefully. I just don't want it to look like I've just replaced it for a brand new seat. Sometimes the repair shop is called upon to help preserve unique historical pieces. And today sees one such item. Caroline Crabtree and her daughter Jenny have traveled from York with a priceless family heirloom in need of attention. Hello, how are we doing? You all right? Yes. I'm Jay. You. And Hello. you are? Caroline. Right. And this is my daughter Jenny. How are you doing, Jenny? You all right? So what have we got here? A pad. Okay. Kirsten, if you don't mind joining us. Kirsten? 
is the repair shop's resident ceramics expert. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it was made by my mum okay. as a present for my dad around the time they got engaged yeah. in the early 1950s. It's so sweet, isn't it, actually? Um, I'm very fond of him. Yeah, I can see why. Let's have a look. So we've got this inscription, a hard beginning maketh a good ending. Yes. So what, is there something, is there a meaning behind that? The first time they met, yeah. Mum and Dad were, they were stage designers and costume designers, both doing different costumes on the show. Oh, right. So the family story goes, Dad said to Mum something like, well, the costume's fine, but you need a few petticoats, a few more petticoats underneath it, and she just <laughs> lost it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Who was this guy coming, telling her what to do with her costume? Oh, okay. She did not appreciate and it. And she didn't know him at that no, point. No, she didn't know oh, him, okay, so right, huge yeah. row. Yeah. Oh, um, no. But then, you know, a little bit later, it obviously worked out, so... Oh, so they got to know each other and got there. over it, yes. Yeah, oh, yes. Oh, interesting. So that was when? How, how long ago? I think it was 1951. I think it says on the base. Oh, um, right, OK, yes. yeah. A present for David on the anniversary of the meeting at the Winter, Winter Garden yes. Theatre. OK, yes. May the 3rd, 1951. 51, yeah, yes. so... And they it. were engaged in 1953, and I think this was made around that time. We went to New Zealand for two years. They worked in the theatre there, came back in 59. And, of course, the theatre had changed then. Things had moved on. The shows they used to do weren't being done anymore, so they need to think of something else um, as a means of earning some money. And they remembered this cat that Mum had made, and they made a few the same way yeah. to see if they would sell, and they did sell, and that was the beginning of producing. Oh. And there's thousands of them out there now. You know, people have great big collections of these things. But oh. this is the very, very first one. And they created a craze, really, because yes. everybody yes. wanted one of these. Yes, even now I'll get a letter from somebody with photographs of their collection of cats, you know, shelves of... How <laughs> lovely! Cats. Yeah, so this is probably incredibly desirable then to people. I know, obviously, it's... To collectors, blonde, so I yeah, guess, yes. Yeah, you know, they yes. would give their eye teeth to, to yes, even I look the, at this. Yes. I have the debate. Or cats were the, the thing. And so, do you have memories of, of this? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I remember. Nice. Yeah. The the whole house, the studio, just covered in cats and yes. different stages of uh, painting and yes. varnishing and things. So it's papier mâché. I can see it's really sort of in the walls. Even actually, as I'm holding it, it's starting. To, <laughs> it's <down>. moving. Yeah. <laughs> so um, this is quite. Yeah. Um, you know, all around the neck is getting damaged and the base is quite worn. Yeah, absolutely. So, thank you for bringing it in, the cat, and then hopefully... Well, Not hopefully. <laughs> we'll get this sorted for you. Yeah, is that lovely. OK? That absolutely. is very thank OK. You. Take care now. Bye. He's not been out of the family's possession before and I know how fragile it is now. Um, I'm excited he's going to get fixed, but... Yeah, a little anxious leaving him behind. It's a lovely story, isn't it? It's it's like yeah. a fairy tale. It's yeah. absolutely charming. When it came out of the box, I thought it was ceramic. That's why I called you oh, over. Oh, right. It's paper mache. It's like... Yeah, I have to say, um, yeah, it's not something that I'm used to dealing with. Yeah. Um, so it is, you know, it's going to be interesting. I, yeah, I can't quite believe that this is the first one yeah. and um, you know it's it's obviously made with love from yeah. the heart but when you was picking it up as well I'm glad you picked it up because bits were falling off it looked like the head was going to drop off at any moment even just on this table I'm, I'm really really concerned about it but if yeah. it's in your hands then it's good I'm okay I, I have to say the less it's handled at the moment the better so I think the quicker I get it to my desk and I can get to work on it the, okay. the better say no more you grab All that right. I've got this box with the cat landed safely on her workbench, Kirsten can get to work ensuring it survives another nine lives. So, having an opportunity now to actually get a really good look at this absolutely sweet little cat, what we've got here is newspaper, because I can actually see the print coming through, um, on top of a wire base, and then perhaps some plaster or something has actually been applied on top of that. And it's very, very fragile. My main sort of concern is the head. It's 
quite loose and the plaster is actually starting to flake away, so I need to do something to actually stabilise that. Kirsten's going to use a consolidant, acrylic glue mixed with a solvent, to secure the flaking paint and plaster and bring strength back to the weak areas of the figurine. It won't make a very, very sort of strong bond, but what it will do is actually just give a sort of a gentle support. I have to say, what I absolutely love about this is that you actually see the little bits of newsprint coming through where the plasters come off. It says something about shoes, wonderful shoes. <laughs> With the small patches of flaking under control, Kirsten can now address the large missing areas in the top layer. I'm just going to support these edges here that have lifted away. Um, and to do that, I'm just going to use these tiny glass bubbles and I'm going to mix those uh, with some consolidant to make a paste that I can then just float underneath the edges just to give them some support. It's just a really nice way of supporting flaking edges. You can do it with sort of very friable ceramics and hopefully it should work quite nicely with these flakes of paint. So I think that's probably all I can do for now and I'm just going to leave that to harden and, um, and then I'll come back to it. Master saddle maker Susie is working on the clay pigeon gun slip. Her first job is to repair the shoulder strap. This catch here is coming off, and the only way I can get to it is by undoing the stitching on this side to get my hand in here. So when it comes to a repair like this, unfortunately, there's a lot of undoing that has to be done to get to even the, the smallest little spot. Now, the fun part, I can start stitching. So I think I'm, I'm one of the luckiest people on the planet. As a kid, I would make saddles and bridles for my Cindy horse and my rocking horse. I just, it was in me. There was nothing else that I wanted to do. I wanted to be a saddler. With the case now sturdy enough to work on, Susie can set about cleaning off 30 years of grime. The way I like to do this is with my bar of glycerine saddle soap, which is a, an old way of conditioning and cleaning leather. So give it a nice dunking there and then rub it onto a cloth. So now we're just going to put it onto this top area here and just see how it behaves, make sure it doesn't go too dark. It's going to go dark because we've got some moisture, and wow, <laughs> there's that's a lot of marks coming off there. This case really needs cleaning. <laughs> so... I love cleaning leather, because you can just see it coming back, and it just looks so beautiful. Susie can now address the crumpled and flattened structure of the gun slip. So it's just a case of sliding in a piece of wood that's about the right shape and size and to not stress the leather. If I was to use something really tight, there's a possibility that I could actually split the leather. And that would not be good. The leather should reshape around the wood, helping it sit proud again. While she waits for the magic to happen, Susie can work on breathing life back into the faded artwork that surrounds the gun slip. The paints I'm using for this are acrylic dyes made specifically for painting on leather. Unlike uh, an oil dye which gets absorbed into the fibres, the acrylic sits on the top, so you can actually build it up in layers and it's not going to spread the same as an oil dye. Just testing this green on my tester piece of leather, and it's, it's really very, very vivid. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of black in it, just get it toned down a little bit. Let's try it on here. OK. 
So that's that's to me is better. It's it's less neon. Just gently start on the crest here. Look at this, this this pheasant is really beginning to come alive now. It's fantastic. I'm having a lot of fun and I'm really liking the end result. <laughs> In the outdoor workshop, Dom is also nearing the end of his project. He has restored and repaired all the components of the Triang go-kart. Now he has to put it all back together in time for owner Mervyn's return. It's kind of becoming a bit of a big Meccano set now. I just need to reassemble. I managed to find these two new wheels for the front of the go-kart. These are from another Triang toy from the very similar era to when this was new, which is great news because they actually fit in exactly the same way as the original ones would have fit. And those two parts line up, and then there's a little clip that clips in there. Almost the last piece of the puzzle, the, the rear wheel, the most important bit. Tim did a fantastic job rebuilding this for me. I think it looks so smart. It's a lot safer. Tim said it was just in a, it needed completely rebuilding. It was just dangerous, really, um, before. So I'm really glad we've got this looking really nice now. So this is the final touch now on the go-kart. Um, when I was stripping off the black paint, there was ever a slight little bit of evidence here on the front that there were remains of a sticker. I've sort of gone away and done some research and found that it would have been the Triang brand logo. Um, I've got a replacement here, but it's brand new. And I've gone to such great lengths to try and preserve all of this beautiful original paint. I don't just want to slap on a sticker. I'm trying to really think about where it's going to go. And I'm looking at all of the damage and the scratches on the original paint where it's going to sit. So the kind of fake damage will marry up exactly with the existing scratches in the original paint. When Mervyn first brought the go-kart into me, I, my initial reaction was like, what on earth is that? It's such a strange looking contraption. It's very different to your typical go-kart. Having worked on it for so long now and spent so much time, I've, come, I've become quite attached to it. And it's, it's, so, it's definitely got a charm. I really just wish I would fit on this thing to give it a go. I'm just really intrigued to see how what it's like to ride, but I unfortunately am never going to fit on it, so. <laughs> But owner Mervyn has brought with him two people who are just the right size to hop aboard this revived 1950s dream machine, his grandchildren. I'm very nervous about what Don's done to the go-kart. I'm hoping he's done a good job. I'm sure he's done a good job, you know, but uh, it's been my pride and joy, and I'm hoping it's going to be all nice and shiny and it's all ready for Willow and Rowan to ride. Willow was hoping I would go on it first. Hopefully, they'll get as much pleasure out of it as I did. What's under there? Irvin, hi. Lovely hi. to see nice you again. again. Who have you brought along? This is Rowan, grandson, and Willow. Hello. Hey. Hello. Are you excited? Yeah. Do you remember um, what you brought along? Well, I the remember the heap of rust. <laughs> it was falling into bits. And I'm hoping you managed to do something with it, so at least it's rideable. Yeah. I, I'm so excited to show you. I can't wait. Yeah. You ready? Oh, yeah. Wow. wow. Green seat as well. Yeah. I can remember the green seat. You can? Yeah, I remember it. Yeah, just like it was. Proper wheels. Is it? This is yeah. amazing. Yeah. Is it how you remember that Christmas morning? It is how I remember that Christmas morning. Came down, saw this, all shiny under the tree. Most of this is the original paint that was underneath. The was black it? Oak. I've not actually had to repaint very much at all, yeah, even the green. It's been so much fun uncovering all the little histories, the little badge and all, yeah. the, you know, all the, the colours. It's, yeah. it's been an absolute pleasure to work on this. So. Yeah. So it was a triumph then? Yes. Yeah. 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 What do you think? I love it. Amazing. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Do you want to try it out? Yes. Yeah? Should we take it outside? Great, miss. Thank you. Hey! <laughs> Brilliant. 
see them riding on a go-kart, it's, it's like a continuation of families and, and hopefully bring them go hey. and pass it further down generations. Well, that's great. Very good. It's nice to see somebody else having the enjoyment out of it. Oh, look at that. She's good. She, yeah, she is good. It was even better than I was hoping for. I think it's amazing. I think she can ride it better than I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that good? Yeah. I only wish I could fit on it and I could have a go, but I certainly got a lot of enjoyment out of it. More used to repairing ceramics, Kirsten has got the weighty responsibility of restoring the papier mache cat that launched a collectibles movement. She's already consolidated the surface and strengthened the structure, and the cat's now dry enough to work on further. The whole thing just feels really sort of solid now. So the next stage is to start filling. I'm going to be using an acrylic filler to make up these sort of areas of loss, just to build them up. It really sort of feels like I'm making progress with this now. It's, it's just lovely when actually you've got something that's very, very fragile. You almost don't sort of touch it, and actually now, um, it feels like a completely different piece as I, as I apply the filler here. So having filled the areas of loss with a filler, I'm now actually going to try and smooth them back. Um, I use flower paper, so it's a very, very sort of fine sandpaper. And all I'm going to do is just try and sort of flatten it off and align the, the edges of the fill with the actual papier-mâché surround. And I can take the, the flower paper right up to the original edge without crossing over and actually causing damage to the papier-mâché. With the surface now filled and level, Kirsten can begin to paint the piece, recreating the delicate hand-painted detail. This is the part that I really love. Um, it's when it starts to sort of come back together again. So I'm just going to be using um, an acrylic paint for this and see if I can sort of match this background colour. There's going to be a yellow, there's going to be an ochre and a raw umber. And I'm just going to start off with that as a basic palette and then sort of make adjustments um, as I go along. This has actually obviously been made by by an artist, and it is a just a one-off piece. Um, you know, there's a real sort of uh, pleasure actually in in taking a close look at the work that's been done. I can see the brush strokes. You know, particularly with the the writing. You know, you can you can feel the movement actually in the painting, and um, yeah, it's it's just a real honour really to be able to work on this. I can sort of relate to the sentiment of this cat, really, as my husband is a maker. And um, certainly when we first met, um, I have some really lovely sort of precious things that were made for me by him. So, so yeah, I get it totally. <laughs> With the background seamlessly matched and blended, Kirsten can now begin painting in the fine details. I'm going to do this sort of detail down the front of his little jacket and, and round the buttons. This requires a steady hand. When you're painting lines, you just need to find the way that it feels for your arm to move quite naturally. If you are sitting sort of awkwardly and you try and pull the brush in a, in a direction that just doesn't feel natural, you're going to end up with quite a sort of wobbly line. So it's, it's all about actually getting comfortable and and working out which way your hand is going to sort of flow quite naturally. So it's very much going with the flow. Susie has nearly finished work on the gun slip. With the leather rich and gleaming, it's time to remove the wooden block in the hope it's reshaped the holster. I have left the block in on the front pocket here. So uh, this was left overnight, and there we have it. Now it's able to stand up by itself instead of flopping over. 
As Susie gives the leather a final polish, owner Kim makes his way back to the repair shop. To pick up the newly restored gift he'd given to his father nearly 30 years ago. It was his 60th birthday when I had it made for him. And unfortunately, he only had the, the gun slip for three years. And he passed away. And it's been in that cupboard for 28 years. And I, when I did take it out, I was really disappointed at the fact that I'd allowed it to deteriorate the way that it that it did. And to have it back in its nice condition again will, will mean the world to me. Hello. Hello, Susie. Good to see you again. What a pleasure. How are you? I'm very well. And yourself? Good. I'm good. Come over. I've got something to show you. Thank you. You remember what it looked like when you came in? I do. It was very sad. It was. Absolutely. And, and I allowed it to get it that way. That was my guilt. Well, OK, you yeah, ready? Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. It's a very emotional. Yeah. It's absolutely perfect. It's a bit overwhelming. Wow. Wow. Absolutely superb. Superb. I can't see it because of the tears in my eyes. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> The detail and the colours, absolutely. The little bars in the feathers, and oh, it's beautiful. There were three people involved in this. Me, my dad, and Ken, who made it. Now there's four. Oh. You're part of that history, and I'm very, very pleased that you're there. That makes me feel very special. I thought I'd lost it. Did you? Yeah, I thought I'd lost it. But um, it's back and gleaming. <laughs> I have thoroughly enjoyed the job and I've really enjoyed meeting you. You are and a so. gentleman. Thank, and thank you. you. Thank you for your thank skill. You. I'm feeling extremely emotional, but extremely, extremely happy to put the gun slip on my shoulder and the memories. It just all comes flooding back and it's a lovely feeling. Kirsten is putting the final touches to the first ever De Bethel cat, the little sculpture that sparked a half century strong collector's craze. The final stage now is to actually try and recreate this um, quite sort of thick varnish that is covering the entire papier mache cat. So I've been doing a little bit as I've gone along, um, and I'm now just sort of putting a final coat. Um, really to sort of recreate these brush strokes that you can see on the original. They're, they're quite distinctive and they sort of give, um, give the piece the character, really. So I'm actually quite pleased with the way this um, sweet little cat has turned out. I haven't done a great deal of papier-mâché in the past, and um, it was really quite badly damaged. I'm hoping that Caroline, when she sees this, is, um, is going to be happy with, with the final results. When Caroline brought the De Bethel cat to the repair shop, it was looking its near 70 years. There were large areas of flaked off paint, and Kitty was in danger of losing her head. Now Caroline's returned to see if Kirsten has managed to restore her family legacy back to its fine form. I'm looking forward to seeing the cat and surprisingly anxious. I didn't think I would be, but surprisingly anxious about seeing it again, wondering how it'll look and whether Kirsten will have managed to do what I hope so that it looks 
as near as it can as it did when Mum first made it. That, that would be... that would be the best. Hi, Caroline. Hello. Lovely to see you again. Hello. How are you? A little bit anxious. Are you? <laughs> well, I won't keep you in suspense. Wow. I wasn't going to be the person who stood here and cried. Look at you, cat. Can I put my glasses of on? Of course, this? yeah. <laughs> it's an absolutely fantastic job. I can't see where you've been. Thank you. Mum would have been so impressed to see it done so well. Doesn't he look good now? Absolutely everything I wanted. He's lovely, thank you. You're very, very welcome. I have to say I'm quite relieved. Because <laughs> <laughs> I sort of felt that connection very much, that it, you know, it was hand-painted by your mother and it felt a great sort of responsibility as I started putting those sort of lines yes. back in, actually. Yes. And also the fact that that wasn't sort of made commercially, you know, that. That was just a, a, a gift from the heart, really. He looks lovely. He looks just as... I remember him from years ago. Wonderful. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's lovely to see him again. And it's just exactly what I was hoping for. If Mum could see it now, she would be really impressed because, like all artists, she would think that nobody would ever sort of fix her work the way she does it, but Kirsten really has. She's done a terrific job.